Hello, my name is Roisin and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So if you've been here before, you can see we're doing something a little bit different today. So I am moving things around in my house. Uh, there is a room downstairs that was always intended to be my kind of office room. But uh, for the first two years that we've lived here, it has been just a storage for all of that clutter that we couldn't be bothered to get rid of. Um, so I've been slowly trying to do that up into being more of my office. And there will be a video of that, uh, which will be coming out probably in January. So if you aren't subscribed, please do. But part of the move means that I need to move everything out of this rickety makeshift shelves here in our spare room and um, down into my actual office downstairs. So I thought that moving everything downstairs would be a great excuse to do an unhaul uh, because I haven't actually got rid of any books here in about the last two years since we moved in probably and I also back then was less um, rigorous about getting rid of books I hadn't read. If I hadn't read them then I assumed that I needed to keep them because I was going to read them. Um, now I think I know my taste a bit better and I'm also a bit more ruthless so I think I'm going to be able to get rid of some of these books. So I thought I would go through everything that I have on my physical TBR and there are also some books on there at the moment so I will take you down there in a bit and we will go through those as well to see if there's anything there I want to get rid of. But we're going to start up there so I'm going to have to scoot you up. Right so you can see up there now I I'm a bit small, so I can't. Um, I'm not a very tall person. <laughs> this was organised by colour at one point, and then I started using books for like background in my bookstagram video, uh, bookstagram pictures, and um, <laughs> it got all jumbled around. I look so tiny down here. Um, I think I'm going to have to take everything off of up there and then bring you back down again so you can see me. I think you're all tilted now from being um, various states. Will be better? Hard to tell. Okay, <laughs> so the books that were on the top. We have Freedom is a Constant Struggle by Angela Y. Davis, which is a collection of essays, interviews and speeches from renowned feminist and uh, race theorist Angela Davis. So I read this last year, um, I thought it was a pretty good introduction. I definitely want to read more of her works that are a bit more academic, but I think I'll keep hold of this. Being Alive and Staying Alive, both of which are collections of poetry, I think by women. I bought these when I was doing my masters in creative and life writing with a focus on poetry. Um, yeah, one of the things that I had to read. I haven't actually read through it, but I do kind of want to keep it. I mean, it's been my New Year's resolution to get back into reading poetry for a while, um, but I think I need to like pay attention and do that. Speaking of my masters in creative and life writing, I also have Reading Like a Writer, a guide for people who love books and those who want to write them. Then there was also Changing My Mind by Zadie Smith. Now at the point of um, buying this. I hadn't read any Zadie Smith and I have now read White Teeth and I really enjoyed it. So I think I probably would enjoy this as well. Another collection another collection of non-fiction essays um, about reading and writing. Homeland by Barbara Kingsolver and this is a collection of short stories um, I believe uh, that I used to be in Cavan County Library. Don't know how it ended up in my collection um, but I love the Poisonwood Bible by Barbara Kingsolver. Then we also have collected stories of Flannery O'Connor. Flannery O'Connor was is one of the most famous American Gothic writers and I'd been meaning to get into American Gothic but I find like big stonking complete works like this a bit like intimidating. I'm hoping next year, this year I've hardly read any of my physical TBR and I'm hoping next year to find a way to like actually work my way through these books. Um, so if you've got any ideas of things I could do to like whittle down my TBR that's not just putting all of the names in a jar and pulling it out because I don't really like that. Any other ideas then I would appreciate it. I have Nervous Conditions by Tsitsi Dangaremga and this one I bought when I was doing reading books from Southern Africa which I will leave in the cards above if you want to go and check that out. I really really enjoyed this book so I'm going to keep it. And we have a QI book of General Ignorance. This is not actually my book, it belongs to my partner so I'm going to give it to him. Um, I have no interest in this book so he can keep that in his office. Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. I've read like five six of this. I've read the vast majority of it and I ha didn't finish it. I didn't... I know Lolita is a very complex subject um, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. I don't think I'm ever going to finish it to be perfectly honest. So I think this is going to be the first book I'm unhauling. Lolita. Uh, another one, Tender is the Night by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I read this last year again uh, in a vlog uh, which I'll try and remember to link up above and I didn't like it. Um, I didn't really enjoy the writing style, I really didn't enjoy all the like racism and misogyny, um, all of the sexual relationships with very young girls found very uncomfortable. Speaking of Lolita, I think I'm gonna get rid of that one as well. 
Herodotus Histories. This is a book that I uh, bought for my undergraduate degree. So I did an undergraduate degree in classics and again I was terrible in my undergraduate degree and never read any of the assigned works. I feel like I'm going to keep a hold of this one because I feel like I should read it as someone with a classical education but I don't know if I ever will read it. That is the thing. Hmm, this one's gonna go on the maybe pile. The Sympathizer by Viet Than Nguyen. This is a, this won the Pulitzer Prize and is a book about uh, the Vietnam War um, and I really didn't like it. Um, well, I didn't really not like it. Um, I liked it for the most part, but all of the women in this book are objects and you know the way that people talked about Game of Thrones and the sexual violence in Game of Thrones, particularly in relation to Sansa and Theon, that, th that trope um, of men's stories being furthered by sexual violence to women. Big, big topic in this book. Like, not addressed, just happens. This one I'm getting rid of as well. Tiny Sunbirds Far Away. This one, um, I don't really know very much about. I was gifted it by my dad's wife's sister. Um, my step-aunt, is that a thing? I have enjoyed a fair amount of fiction from Nigeria. Um, so if you have anything, I'm going to keep this one for now. If you know anything about this, please let me know in the comments. Um, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, and on top here I have Closure, which is contemporary black British short stories. There were some really good stories in here, but most of them were okay or bad. I didn't really enjoy this collection anthology very much. I'm not a huge anthology person anyway. Some of them were great, some of them I didn't love so much. Oh, I'm gonna get rid of that one. The Argonauts by Maggie Nelson, one that I've heard loads of people rave about and love. I also think it's beautiful. Um, so I'm gonna keep hold of this one. Um, it's about her partner who is non-binary and um, they're having children, I think. Uh, the Odyssey of Homer. So this is the edition, this is translated by Richard Lattimore, which is the edition that I had to use during my undergraduate degree. It is very floppy uh, edition, because this one I got in Canada, because I did a year abroad in Canada. And um, I think I'm gonna get rid of this, you know? I don't need to have loads of editions of the Odyssey um, in various different translations, not really my thing. Love in a Cold Climate by Nancy Mitford is a classic that I really enjoy. Um, it is about a rich family in the UK and their relationship to fascism and communism in Europe and love and things. Witty and sardonic and satirical. Um, I do like this, so I think I'm gonna keep hold of it. I don't wanna end up getting rid of all my books. That's, that's not really the point. Um, because my shelves downstairs are actually bigger than these shelves, so I'll need more books than I have. The Bone Clock by David Mitchell. I read this one last year as well when I was reading fantasy books. Link above if you're interested. Um, and it wasn't my jam entirely. There was, it was all, there were like five different perspectives. They were all written in different styles. Some of the styles I like more than others. And when the plots start to pick up, I disliked it. So yeah, this one doesn't really speak to me. So I'm gonna get rid of that. No Matter the Wreckage by Sarah Kay. I found Sarah Kay on YouTube when I was about 14 and she's one of the people who got me interested in poetry. So I think I'm gonna have to keep hold of this for nostalgia reasons. Uh, she's a great poet, like, <laughs> no shade. Alice Oswald, nobody. Um, Alice Oswald is a poet who uses mythology in her poetry. Helios, Icarus, Alcione, yeah. So she uses Greek mythology in her poetry, something that I'm interested in, so I need to read this. Plato's Dialogues. Um, you can see some of the themes of my older interests coming out. Um, this one I bought when I did philosophy in university and I'm not a huge Plato fan, so. We're getting rid of this one. Sharks in the Rivers is a poetry collection I started reading in January and put down. Um, I didn't 100% love the first poems in this. I felt like they were too confusing for me. Um, as And I've studied poetry, so I feel like I shouldn't be that confused by po most poetry, but I'm gonna hold on to it and see how far we go. Mary Oliver, on the other hand, might be basic, but I love Mary Oliver. Uh, excellent poem, lots of um, dog ears in this one. Uh, always find it soothing and calming to go back to, so yeah. I'll keep hold of the Mary Oliver. Uh, this is Ill Feelings by Alice Hattrick, which I did an interview with Alice um, on my friend Sarah's blog, Hysterical Women. Uh, Alice is writing about their experience of chronic illness and their mother's experience of the same chronic illness. Um, so I'll link my interview in the description, but I need to give this one back to Sarah. So I'll put that on my pile of ones to give to people who actually own the book. And we have Women's Work, which is another one. Oh, this is the one that was edited by my um, lecturer, Ida Saltzman. Um, it's another one that I haven't actually read, but need to, and I'm keeping for the same reason as being alive and staying alive. Since this, this was my poetry shelf, because I also have Poetry Rebellion. Um, this is a collection of poetry about rewilding and uh, climate change. Um, we're going back through time, so there are like 
old poems in here, poems across different cultures. Um, it's kind of a coffee table poetry book, but yeah, one that I bought when I was in the Lake District in February and I went round to different uh, bookshops in the Lake District. I'll leave that video in the cards if you were interested in that as well and if I still have space up there. Um, the Mitford Murders by Jessica Fellows is another one that I didn't love, really was not a huge fan of this book. Read it last year when I was reading Cozy Mysteries, but also doesn't belong to me, belongs to my partner's grandma. Black Cat Bone by John Burnside, another poetry collection that I have not read. I I need to read the poetry. Um, so yeah, I know that John Burnside is a very popular um, Scottish poet. I believe that Jen Campbell and Jean uh, as Bookish Thoughts are both fans of John Burnside, so I need to read this one as well. The Pursuit of Love, this is the other book that goes with Love in a Cold Climate. They're kind of a little duology, um, although they kind of run alongside each other. One of them I prefer, I don't remember which one it is, but yeah, I think I'll keep both of these. Grief is the Thing with Feathers by Max Porter. Um, this is one of those books that I have got it into my head that I have to read the other book first. So this is in relation to Crow by Ted Hughes. So I feel like I need to read Crow before I can read this, and then I've just never read Crow, which is why I have not got round to reading this. Um, again, it's it's not actually poetry, but obviously it's related to poetry, um, and Jane Campbell has raved about this one. Um, Life Class by Pat Barker. I bought this because I loved Regeneration, um, the trilogy about the First World War, and this one is also set during the First World War. I also have The Wa Wolf Wilder by Catherine Rundell. When I bought this, I just liked the cover, and I didn't realise it was middle grade. I don't know how I didn't realise, because that cover is super middle grade, and it's been blurred by Philip Pullman, so. Um, but I recently saw someone on Instagram talking about this, and how good it is, particularly the audiobook. So I think I'm gonna hold on to this one, because I've got into middle grade this year, so I feel like this might be a good one to read. Good wintry read, actually, so maybe I'll read this one soon. What is Not Yours is Not Yours by Helen Oyeyemi. I read this one this year, I absolutely loved it. Need to read more Oyeyemi, so I'm going to keep hold of this one. Collection of short stories, uh, dark, creepy, fairy tale based, fabulism. Love it. Spring Summer Green Feast by Nigel Slater, a cookbook that I've never actually cooked from, possibly because I've kept it in my spare room instead of in my kitchen. So this one is just gonna go to the kitchen because that's where it lives. The Casino by Margaret Bonham. I bought this one honestly because um, Persephone books have a deal if you buy three books and so I picked this one up because everyone raves about Persephone books. I don't know anything about this one. Uh, let me know if you've read this one in the description. This is another one I'm gonna look up and see if I feel like keeping hold of it. Perfume, the story of a murderer. Bought this one in a second hand shop um, and it's not the best condition, kind of damaged, um, but I bought this because um, I love the film and so I thought might as well read the books. Crime and Punishment. I tried to read this one last year, I didn't get very far at all. I have a interest in and a great desire to read Russian classics because I studied Russian at school for four years and um, got interested in the history and the culture but I've never actually read, apart from most of Lolita. <laughs> That's the only, that's the closest I've got to reading a Russian book. So I'm keeping on hold of this one, but you need to hold me to account. I need to read this. Feral by George Monbiot. I have read the, like one fifth of this and I've also read Out of the Wreckage or How Do We Get Into This Mess? Another one of George Monbiot's books, which was a collection of essays. I read and I loved, I love his style of writing. Beautiful nature writing, really passionate. Need to read this one. Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. Um, this is another fantasy novel with a weird premise um, that jumps around in time. It's not my favourite. I don't think David Mitchell's for me really, so I'm going to get rid of that one. This is my favourite. This is Bring Up the Bodies by Hilary Mantel. The only one of the three of the Wolf Hall trilogy that I actually own. Um, the others, I read Wolf Hall in audiobook and I borrowed The Mirror and the Light from the library. So this is the only one I have a physical copy of. Um, kind of tempted to get the like new pretty covers in hardback, but also I quite like this one anyway, and this is the one I actually read. So I'm keeping this one, obviously, I love this, but I feel like I, I need to buy the others. Another one that's my boyfriend's The English and the History by Robert Tomes. Maximum City by Sekatu Meta. I think we can see that there's a theme of me not reading classics, poetry, and non-fiction. Seems to be my where I struggle, but um this is one that I've been meaning to read for years, that I've read like the first third of several times, but I need to actually get into it. It's about uh, Mumbai, um, the people, the history, all of that. Song of Achilles, this book is super popular on booktube uh, among a certain subset, um, and is one that I have been meaning to read since it became super popular on Tumblr, um, but I felt like because I've not read the Iliad ever, 
that I need to read the Iliad first. I get to the second book, the Book of Ships, a list of ships and who's on them and whose son they are, and I just can't get any further. Um, so <laughs> maybe I need to bite the bullet and actually just read the Song of Achilles rather than trying to read the Iliad first. One that I have read again, The Odyssey by Homer in the translation by Emily Wilson, the first woman to translate the Odyssey into English. I wrote an essay about this for my masters. I made a video of that essay, my first kind of video essay, although it's a different style to my others because it's just me reading the essay. Um, but if you are interested, I'll leave that in the cards. I talk about the difference in translation between Emily Wilson um, and the previous male translators. This one has a pumpkin on it. Um, <laughs> it's November now. I probably should get rid of these pumpkins. So we have The Invisible Child and the Fir Tree by Tove Janssen. I'm a big Moomins fan. I love the Moomins. Um, this is a really cute collection. This is two short stories. Uh, one that's about Christmas and one that's about an invisible child. And yeah, I'm keeping that. I love Moomins. Dominicana by Angie Cruz. I read this last year when I was reading the Women's Prize for Fiction. It will be in the description because I think I've run out of space up there. Um, and this was my least favourite of all of the Women's Prize. Badly written was my uh, overall conclusion on Dominicana. Uh, the story was fine, the characters were underdeveloped and the writing was juvenile. The Miniaturist by Jesse Burton. I feel like, I mean it's a hugely popular historical fiction and I love me some historical fiction. Um, so I feel like I should get into this. Small Beauty by Jia Ching Wilson Yang. I read this one last year for the Readathon in the description if you're interested. Um, and this one I thought had some promise, um, some beautiful writing, but again I felt like the characters were underdeveloped and there was a little, it was the writing was just a bit jarring and it didn't quite flow smoothly um, through the narrative. Uh, this is a debut novel um, so I think that their future writing, her future writing could be better but this one wasn't the best. Creating Freedom by Raoul Martinez, Power Control and the Fight for Our Future is one that I picked up in the London Review of Books when I used to just go and stare at their non-fiction shelves. I've talked about before on this channel about how non-fiction is actually what I'm usually drawn to in bookshops um, because I'm drawn to fiction when I know something about the book but I'm not really t tend to be just drawn to the cover. Whereas non-fiction, I always want to know <laughs> the things that are inside it. I want to know more, um, but obviously I pick up way more fiction than non-fiction because I just, I'm scared of them. I find them intimidating. The Good Immigrant by uh, Nikesh Shukla, well edited by Nikesh Shukla. I read Nikesh Shukla's book, Brown Baby. I've read some of the essays in here. I have not finished it. This is another anthology of different essays of people who are immigrants to the UK um, and their experience growing up. Uh, or living in the UK um, with its hostile environment and racism. Uh, one that I know I need to read and a lot of people have said great things about. I only read the ones by people I recognise, so I read Nish Kumar's and Renier de Lodge. I can't remember, I've read like three or four of them but not all of them. Then we have The Laguna by Barbara, Barbara Kingsolver, so I've already mentioned I loved uh, The Poison of the Bible by Barbara Kingsolver, so I know I need to read this one. Picked it up second hand again, which is why it's not in the best condition, but um, that is how I used to buy most of my books. It's so chunky. It's so chunky I find it intimidating. A chunky book that I have read though is Upon a Burning Throne by Ash Ashok K. Banker. Starla from Starla Reads, she read this and she really loved it and so I read it when I was reading fantasy for a week and I really didn't like it. Um, the plot felt really fast paced, the characters felt really underdeveloped. High fantasy is not really my jam so sorry my camera just stopped recording but basically I'm getting rid of Upon a Burning Throne. Nervous System by Lila Merwane. This is a book that I was sent by the publisher, sent a finished copy by Atlantic Books um, and this one is one that I'm really interested in and one I'm reading later this month when I read books from Latin America. Lila Merwane is a Chilean author I believe and it was translated by Megan McDowell so I'll be reading this one very soon. Delusions of Gender by Cordelia Fine. I read this one this year and I really loved it as well um, although a little dated but I did enjoy it. Uh, this is science non-fiction about the actual neurological differences between men and women's brains, boys and girls' brains, um, and how outdated that idea is. The Liar's Dictionary by Ellie Williams. This is one that I bought uh, when I did that Lake District bookshop tour. It's one that I heard lots of great things about. Man wishing to make his lasting mark back in 1899. So another piece of historical fiction. Saplings by Noel Streetfield is another one of the happy books that I bought. I have actually read this one. Um, this is an adult book. Noel Streetfield is most famous for her children's work but this one is adult book set during the Second World War about a family and their kind of really sad mundane experience. I didn't love this one. 
it was all right, but it was a bit detached for me. So I think I'm gonna get rid of this one. The Vegetable Gardener's Guide to Permaculture. This belongs to my boyfriend, so he can have that back. The Good Dark by Ryan Van Winkle. I read this back in the very, very early days of my channel, in the videos where you can barely see me, um, and I didn't love it, so we're getting rid of it. Half of a Yellow Song by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Now, we know Chimamanda has gone the way of J.K. Rowling, um, but I can't deny that I love this book. Not a huge rereader, so keeping hold of my um, old books that I have liked is more for sentimental reasons than the idea that I might read them again. So I actually might get rid of this one. Another one that I think I'll get rid of, The Penelope Ad by Margaret Atwood. Also a little J.K. Rowling on Margaret Atwood. Um, but the main reason that I'm getting rid of this is I didn't love it. And I feel like I should as a classicist, feminist person. This should be one of the books that I love. It kind of reminded me more of Carol Ann Duffy and The World's Wife, very much on the nose, second wave feminism bores me and I'm not interested. John le Carré, Tinker Tailor, Soldier Spy. I read this one last year as well and it is also my boyfriend's so he can have that back. We are all completely beside ourselves. This one's my mum's, um, although she, she gave it to me to read uh, years and years ago when I still lived in her house uh, and I have not read it yet. Uh, I think this one, yeah, long listed for the booker in 2014. Khaled Husseini and Barbara Kingsolver on the back. I should probably read this. Have you read this? What did you think? I think it was like massively popular in 2014. For Whom the Bell Tolls, Ernest Hemingway. I have tried this. I have not got very far in this. I feel like I should at least finish one Hemingway and then I can make a decision about the man. <laughs> um, I don't know. I d I'm not sure I'll like this. I feel like mid-century misogynists are kind of something that annoy me and I feel like that's what Hemingway is. But yeah, I'll keep, ho I'll keep hold of this, I think. Now I'll put it on my maybe part. I can join the maybes. 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I just did a video about magical realism. If you'd like to go check that out, I'll leave it in the description. And I'm reading it next month, this month. So definitely keeping this one at least until the end of November. The Aeneid. This one is translated by Shadi Barch. Um, so that is a woman translating the Aeneid into English. I heard so many good things about this from Matthew Sharapa. Um, so yeah, I need to read this one. Probably the best version of the Aeneid in modern English, apparently. The Metamorphosis. This one I can't get rid of because <laughs> It still has all my tabbies from when I did my dissertation on the metamorphoses, so I'm keeping it. Testosterone Rex. So I already said I enjoyed Delusions of Gender. This is the follow-up, which I think came out in about 2015. 2017. Unmaking the Myth of Our Gender's Minds, and it's about hormones, and I know the Banging Book Club read this and really loved it, so yeah, I'm keeping this one. Sisters of the Revolution, a feminist speculative fiction anthology. I don't really like anthologies, I don't really like speculative fiction. Why do I have this collection? After Ovid, a collection of poetry in relation to Ovid's Metamorphoses, I was rec recommended this by my tutor when I was doing my Masters in Creative and Life Writing because my poetry was a reaction to Ovid's Metamorphosis, so this is more modern people reacting to that. Um, although edited all by men and most of the poems are written by men. Um, Alice Oswald, I think, is and Amy Clampett are the only women. The rest are all blokes. Um, at Night All Blood is Black. This is one that I've been meaning to read for a long time. It won the International Book Prize this year. Um, Crime and Punishment just fell on the floor. Beneath the Lion's Gates by Mazamang Giste. I bought this one for a video where I gave authors a second chance. because or Authors I loved. I tried to read a second book from them because I loved The Shadow King so much. Um, and because I loved The Shadow King so much and I didn't get around to reading this in that vlog. Imperium by Ryzard Kap Kapuczynski. So this one is about... Um, the story of an empire, the Un Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, the USSR. As I mentioned, I studied Russian at school and have always been interested in Russia. Um, this one had really great reviews and is another one that I bought in the London Review of Books when I used to work around there. Weather by Jenny Offal, another one that I read during my reading of the Women's Prize shortlist last year and probably my second least favourite, my second least favourite, A Book of Nothing. <laughs> really, really dull. Um, and just a privileged late old middle-aged lady wandering around New York being boring and annoying. Uh, Snow Falling on the Cedars by David Gutterson. This one I also got at a second-hand bookshop. Truman Capote, Arthur Miller, Harper Lee and John Grisham. Um, so I like Truman Capote, ha Arthur Miller and Harper Lee. So I thought, I should probably read it. I've definitely heard of it. Don't know much about it though. Delhi by Sam Miller. This is a book that I bought before I went with my boyfriend traveling. We were going to spend six months in India. It ended up only being 10 weeks in India, but we had a great time. Oh, another one from a secondhand bookshop. I don't know if I want this one either. 
if you know anything about it let me know hold your own uh this is kate tempest but they are k tempest uh this is a collection of poetry another one that i've actually read so this one is based on the myth of tiresias and i really enjoyed a lot of the poems in this book the enigma of capital and the crisis of capitalism by david harvey he's been on a lot of the podcasts i listen to i think like talking politics um i really am interested in politics i am a very political person and i read a lot uh, of articles and listen to a lot of politic uh, podcasts about politics but i don't read a lot of politics books and i feel like i should read more books and also like because i don't read a lot of pol political books i don't talk about politics that much on here but it is one of my interests po political books i read are bright red and say capital on the front so you can see where i'm leaning nick hornby funny girl let's make a main character's entire personality that she has big tits that one's going in a bit. Uh, Somewhere Becoming Rain, Collected Writings on Philip Larkin by Clive James. Clive James is a critic, Philip Larkin is a poet, uh, and my dad gave me this for Christmas, so I haven't read it yet, and it's nearly Christmas again, but I'm probably going to keep it. No, I'm definitely going to keep it and hopefully going to read it. The Tent by Margaret Atwood. Now, I've mentioned that thing about the Penelope ad. I did like The Handmaid's Tale when I read it in school, and I just... I really like the cover of this and how diddy it is. It's a diddy book and I quite like that. I don't know, I'll put this on my maybe well too and you can tell me what you think of that. A Single Man by Christopher Stewart. This was made into a film with Colin Firth and uh, Matthew Good um, and I really love that film so I wanted to read the book. Again, this is the politics I'm talking about, the communist hypothesis. Um, all of my politics books are bright red. Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. I think this belongs to my boyfriend. He can have it back. Autumn, an anthology for the changing seasons. I love seasonal things, particularly autumnal things, but I, again, I've never really got through this. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I've just lost interest in the idea of reading it. So, getting rid of that one. I feel like I'm becoming more ruthless the further I get through this video. The Wide Sargasso Sea by Jean Rhys, a uh, two pounds, that's how much I spent on this, apparently. This is a classic. I'm trying to read 30 classics before I'm 30. Maybe I should hold on to all of them. That one's only Diddy as well. Dracula by Bram Stoker. I also bought this one in the Lake District and I'm saving it because I've, my friend um, is from Yorkshire and knows Whitby really well and we've been meaning to go to Whitby together. It hasn't happened yet. There have been lots of complications, not in our friendship, just people getting married and pregnant and that sort of thing. So not me, not pregnant. <laughs> Haven't got around to it yet because I'm saving it for that specific moment. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna keep it because hopefully we will get to Whitby eventually, even if there are some small screaming people there. Wonderland by Ginny Reddy, a search for a magical landscape. Um, I've said I've been meaning to get into more uh, nature writing and a lot of nature writing is very white male dominated, but Ginny Reddy is not white or male. Um, and this one was shortlisted for the Wainwright Prize last year as well, which is the UK Nature Writing Prize. The Angry Chef, Bad Science and the Truth Behind Healthy Eating. I followed him on Twitter and really enjoyed his tweets and meant to read the book and never got round to it. Paleo, detox, gluten-free, alkaline, sugar conspiracy, clean eating and how harmful those things are. De Zhivago, another one of these Russian classics that I need to get through. On Tyranny, 20 Lessons from the 20th Century by Tim Timothy Snyder, another political non-fiction. This one's only tiny, so I don't know what my excuse is, but I'm keeping that one. The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. Now, I loved Thingy Bob by Donna Tartt. Thingy Bob, that's useful. I loved um, the one, the big one, Secret History. I love The Secret History by Donna Tartt. Um, so I know I need to read this one too. Um, I know not everyone loves it, but it's so huge. I'm just really intimidated by giant books. I don't read many of them. Um, the Secret Scripture by Sebastian Barry, another one that my step-aunt bought for me. And I didn't realise I had a Sebastian Barry book when I was reading Irish Authors and I borrowed a Sebastian Barry book from the library. Um, I could have read this one. Um, but now I know I like his writing style, so hopefully that will encourage me to read this. Us by David Nichols, a book I picked up probably more than a decade ago. But I picked this up in a train station because I was going on a long journey and I didn't have a book. Um, and I thought it would be an easy read, but it was just a really boring read. And I didn't like One Day anyway, so I don't know why I picked it up. Rue by Kim Thway, a beautiful vignette um, of uh, one woman's experience, kind of autofiction, of her experience being um, one of the Vietnamese boat people. Vietnamese, not Vietnamese. Vietnamese boat people. I, re I did enjoy it, but I think I'm going to get rid of it. Why I Write by George Orwell, another one I got during my um, master's degree in writing. Uh, tiny classic, keeping it. We're on the last shelf up here. One that I have to keep, um, even though I have no need of it. And I had no need of it during my undergraduate degree, but I made my dad get it for me. It was my Christmas present once one year. The Oxford Classical Dictionary. It's a dictionary where you can look up anything in classics and it gives you a little 
little segment about them. Um, this is enormous and I don't need it, but I kind of feel sentimental about it. I'm keeping hold of that. Another one my dad got me, Happy by Darren Brown. Why more or less everything is absolutely fine. I'm not really a self-help person, but I do feel bad giving away presents. But he will never watch this and has no idea. I think I'm gonna get rid of it. Don't tell him, okay. The First Wife by Paula Cipriani. I read this again when I was reading Southern African fiction. This one I didn't like. Weird square book as well, so it won't look good on my bookshelves. So, getting rid of that. Now I'm about to do some booktube blasphemy, uh, so look away now if you're not interested. This book was terrible. <laughs> well, not terrible, it was just rubbish and like didn't make any sense. Very compelling reading, um, but half of it was pointless. Uh, the bit with the journalist, completely pointless, and um, lots of very convenient plot co coincidences and kind of bad gossipy writing. Felt like Heat Magazine wrote a book. Grim Tales for Young and Old by Philip Pullman. Another person who's destroyed by having a Twitter presence, but fairy tales, and I do like Pullman's style of writing. I think I'm going to keep hold of it, but I will just mention the fact that he's been a bit of a shit on uh, in, uh, Twitter every time I mention it. Uh, so we have Ra the book of um, Raoul Peck's, a, a Raoul Peck's documentary about James Baldwin. Um, I have read this. I didn't love it, and I think it's because a film doesn't make a great book. Um, so I'm, I am actually going to get rid of this. Um, I want to read more of James Baldwin's writing rather than that version of it. I just think it was, doesn't really work as a transfer from a visual to a uh, text-based medium. The Troubles With Us. Uh, this is a, a proof that I was sent by Fourth Estate Books. It came out in June and I still haven't read it, so probably shouldn't have requested a book and then not read it. Um, but anyway, I um, my mum's from Derry, which I've talked about on here before. My mum is from Derry, so I feel a strong connection to The Troubles uh, by through family stories, um, and so I want to read more about it. When We Were Orphans by Kazuo Ishiguro. I have read Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. I thought it was okay. I thought the writing was quite nice. I thought I didn't really like the rest of it. I do want to read The Remains of the Day, and I know lots of people like this one too, so I'm gonna keep it. <sighs> Seven Years in Tibet by Heinrich Harder, about a German, an Olympic ski champion, yeah, he was Austrian, who got caught, captured as a prisoner of war in India, then tried to flee through the Himalayas, got to Tibet, made friends with the Dalai Lama. I actually think I'm gonna get rid of it. Don't think I'm ever gonna read that. And finally, another one that I don't think I'm ever gonna read, Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. <sighs> She's one of those books that's been too hyped and too um, embroiled in various scandals. And I'm just not here for the discourse. I just can't be bothered with the discourse. So I'd rather just not read it. So we have cleared out all of these shelves, apart from the tiny pumpkin. Um, uh, so we've got a few more books downstairs um, to talk to you about and probably scattered through various other rooms so I'll try and collect them all and I'll talk to you about them. Then we can go through my maybe pile and you can tell me whether I should get rid of them or not. Hello, so we are in my office now and these are the other books that exist in my house um, that I need to go through before we move everything in here. This room is tiny so <laughs> you're as far away from me as you can possibly be um, but yeah I'm a bit cramped in. Um, so up here we have like board board games and stuff and down here we have craft stuff. Um, I am going to try, I have a like space back here which I want to make into storage. I'm making a whole video of this as I already said of making my reading nook study room set up so um, I will show you that when I've done it. I have here the text of modern English history book one and book two. Um, these belonged to my partner's grandfather so uh, they have to stay in the house for sentimental purposes but I don't think they need to be in my office. I can probably give them back to my partner. Les Mis. Now, I don't know if I'm ever going to read Les Mis. Um, it's chunky. Uh, it is thin pages, tiny writing kind of a situation. Um, and I'm not sure it's my kind of classic. Hang on. I know Charlotte at Coiny Raid loves this book. Um, and I do like having a cloth pan classic. I think this one's gonna have to go on my maybe pile, but if you think I should keep it, let me know. Then I have The Night Before Christmas. Um, my mum used to read this to me every night at Christmas, not this edition. I bought this last year when I read you guys The Night Before Christmas, which you can check out in the cards. There's no room in those cards, is there? In the description. Um, but yeah, I, I'm gonna keep this one. Definitely keeping this one. We have Build Your House Around My Body by Violet Cooper Smith. This one I read very recently, um, this summer, um, and I actually borrowed it from the library and then dropped it in the bath. <laughs> I don't usually read in the bath for that reason. Get a new one for the library, so I ended up with a copy. I did really enjoy this. Um, I'm probably gonna keep it for now. 
yeah i'm not sure actually this will go on the maybe pile as well it's a vietnamese kind of ghost story and i did really enjoy it when i read it but i don't know if i'll ever read it again another um proof that i requested this is the great imperial hangover how empires have shaped the world it is about russia britain america and china uh, and modern day empires as well as historical ones america is not the heart by elaine castillo uh, this is one that hannah may recommended loads uh, and so i ended up picking it up Hero de Vera arrives in America disowned by her parents in the Philippines. So this is a story about immigration in the Philippines. I haven't read it yet, but it is still one I want to read. The Little Book of Huga. Um, I feel like I got this free at some point. Um, I don't think I've ever read it. I don't know. I like coziness and cozy things. I think I'll put this one on my mobile pile as well. I don't know if I'm ever going to get around to reading it, but it, is, it does look quite cute. Devotions by Hannah Kent, or Devotion by Hannah Kent. Um, I read Burial Rites by Hannah Kent this year and I really enjoyed it on your guys' recommendation actually. This one's coming out 3rd of February next year. I requested it, was really excited for it. It's been blogged by Kieran Millwood Hargrave and Sarah Winman. It is historical fiction of an ocean voyage to Australia and queer relationship between two women. Black and British by David Olusoga. This one obviously loads of people have raved about. Uh, lots of people have said that how good this one is. Um, um, about black British history, how black British people, have, how black people have been on the British Isles since at least Roman Britain. It's chunky. I've been reading more non-fiction this month because of non-fiction November and I have found that I quite like it on audio so I'm gonna keep hold of this one but I might try and find it on audio as well. Reuben Sachs by Amy Levy or Levi Levy. Um, <laughs> that's some sort of pronunciation. This is the third and final of my Persephone classics and this is about a um, Jewish family I believe in London in the Victorian times um, and it is one of the ones that I talked about wanting to read as my 30 classics before 30, wanting to read more Jewish fiction, uh, particularly British Jewish fiction. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna keep hold of that one definitely. The Old Ways, Journeys on Foot by Robert McFarlane. Uh, this is a piece of nature writing about walking the tracks, hollow ways, drove roads and sea paths that form a vast and ancient network crisscrossing criss the British Isles. I began to listen to the audiobook of Underland by Robert McFarlane and his writing is really beautiful and poetic and I'm a walker, I love to walk. Uh, country walks are a thing that me and my partner do a lot so this one stuck out to me for that reason. The Ghost Road by Pat Barker. It is the final book in the Regeneration trilogy. I really enjoyed Regeneration and The Eye in the Door so I feel like I should get to The Ghost Road. However, um, it has been years. I was like a decade since I read the other two and so I feel like I'd maybe need to reread them and that is why I have not got around to reading this one yet. Now we have Grow Your Own Drugs and The Thrifty Forager. Um, you're probably not surprised when I tell you these are my boyfriends. Uh, this is his interests, not mine, so I will give those back to him. The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. I have read this, not this edition, but I have read this book, but this edition belongs to my boyfriend. 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I showed you another edition of 100 Years of Solitude upstairs, which I bought because it was so pretty and because I forgot I had this. I thought I had Love in the Time of Cholera. And it also has a little note in it. Oh, okay, so I thought it was this one that had a note in it from my mum to my dad, but actually that one might be Love in the Time of Cholera, which must be around somewhere then. Around somewhere, but not here. So anyway, um, I will find that but I'm probably going to get rid of this one then because I thought this was the one that my mum had given to my dad but it's not so um, there's no sentimental reason to hang on to this one so we'll get rid of it then we have White Teeth by Zadie Smith I read this, I liked it, I think I gave it 5 stars last year um, so yeah I think I'm going to keep that one um, although I don't know, I'm, I'm rubbish at rereading so maybe I should get rid of all the books I've already read I don't know, we're quite empty here aren't we? I haven't brought the books from upstairs yet but I would like this whole thing to be full of books, so I should probably keep ones that I actually really like. Greek Lyric Poetry, translated by M. L. West. Uh, this is another one from my master's, uh, from my undergraduate degree. Scribbled on it. <laughs> the Aeneid by Virgil. Cracked spine, ancient one. I think I possibly got this second hand. Possibly. This one's been translated by David West. Not M. L. West, yeah, David West. Um, not read this from start to finish either. I think I read about half of this. But I do have the lovely translation upstairs, so maybe I can get rid of this one, because I have that nice one. India in Slow Motion by Mark Tully, another one I bought before we went travelling in India. I don't know about this one actually, because I feel like I'd rather read books about India by Indian people. Maybe this is a good one, I don't know at all. If you know anything about it, let me know. So I'll put this on my maybe pile, and you can 
tell me whether I should keep this or not. And I'll do a little research about Mark. Ian Forster, where angels fear to tread. Another one that I got in a secondhand shop. Um, I have read A Room With A View and A Passage To India and I enjoy Ian Forster's writing. So I'll keep hold of this one. It's only a little classic as well. So when I'm trying to read 30 before 30, which is less than a year away now, um, <laughs> short classics are gonna be my best friend, aren't they? Washington Black by Essie Ediguyen, which was shortlisted for the Booker Prize in 2018 and is historical fiction about Washington Black, an 11 year old field slave who finds himself selected as the personal servant to the eccentric Titch Wilde, who was an inventor, explorer, and abolitionist. Um, listen, I love a hot air balloon, um, and I love historical fiction, particularly historical fiction that has won the Booker or has been shortlisted for the Booker. I've realised that's my jam. This is a notebook, um, so it doesn't really count. My boyfriend's grandma got me these, so I'm definitely going to keep them, even though I'm not a huge Charles Dickens person. But we have Oliver Twist, David Copperfield, which I have read, not this edition. I listened to the audiobook. The Pickwick Papers, and they're in these like mini classic editions with gold leaf. Um, they are the lovely little cute collector's editions. They were gifts from my boyfriend's grandma. Um, and yeah, I probably won't read them, but I like them enough to keep them. The Making of a Poem, another book from my master's degree, one I actually have read a lot of. Um, this one is about specifically like different types of verse. Um, so it tells you the history of them and then gives you lots of examples of things like sonnets, ballads, sestinas, villanelles. So you can get a grasp of the form. The Wood for the Trees by Richard Forty, another piece of nature writing, and I just liked the cover of this one. I'm probably going to keep this one, uh, but if you know anything about it, let me know if I shouldn't keep it. Everyday Guide to British Birds, also my boyfriends. Life on Our Planet by David Attenborough, also my boyfriends. The Binding by Bridget Collins, another sort of light fantasy historical fiction, which is one of the genres that I enjoy quite a lot. This one's had a lot of hype and I read The Betrayals by Bridget Collins at the start of this year and I didn't love the plot but I really liked the writing and the atmosphere so I think yes I will keep this one. Uh, a Ghost in the Throat by Doreen Negrifa. Uh, this is, she, Doreen Negrifa is a poet and this is about, this is kind of auto fiction and also about an Irish noblewoman in the 1700s discovering that her husband has been murdered, drinking a handful of his blood and composing a poem. Um, so it sounds intense um, but yeah I'm, I'm gonna, gonna read this one I think. The Mermaid of Black Conch by Monique Roffey. This one was gifted to me by um, Vintage. I've heard different things about this one. It is um, Caribbean fiction, it is a love story between a man and a mermaid and it won the Costa Book of the Year award last year. So, And then finally we have oh, The Raging Quiet. This belongs to my friend Hannah so I'll give that back to her and a coffee table book about botanical style. This one is mine. That's it, we've gone through all of the books that I own, so I can start bringing books down into this room now and getting rid of some of the books that I didn't want to keep. So um, by getting rid, I mean I'll probably give them to the library where I work or to um, a charity shop nearby. Um, I'm not gonna like bin them or anything, don't worry about that. Um, but we should go through the maybes and you can tell me whether you think I should keep them or not. So this is the stack of books that I'm getting rid of. It's quite a precarious pile there on my side table. As I was going through it, I have to say, I didn't think I was getting rid of that many books. I thought I was keeping hold of most of them. And I am, but I'm pretty impressed with this pile that I am going to get rid of. I think I've done not too bad a job of unhauling. Let's see how many are there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Not too shabby. So this is my stack of maybes and this I have to say that this stack is higher than I thought it would be as well. So yeah you've got to help me choose which ones to get rid of. So let me know in the comments which ones you think I should get rid of. We have The Tent by Margaret Atwood, For Whom the Bell Tolls by Ernest Hemingway, India in Slow Motion by Mark Tully, We Are All Completely Beside Ourselves by Karen Joy Fowler, Snow Falling on the Cedars by David Gutterson, Delhi by Sam Miller, Herodotus The Histories, the Casino by Margaret Bonham, Les Mis by Victor Hugo, and Build Your House Around My Body by Violet Cooper-Smith. So there we go, that is all my books on my shelf. Now, as I said in the beginning, I want to move the board games and the crafts into my corner over there that you can see 
is currently full of cardboard boxes that need to be broken down and taken out with the recycling. So this is not anywhere near full, which just means I need to buy more books. Um, but also, this is probably not the order they're going to end up in. I just kind of put them on the shelf for now. I wanted to see how full this is and how they look. I think I really like it, the way they look. Um, so I'll probably, in the video where I show you setting up this nook, I'll probably decide on some sort of organisation system. But that's what we've got so far. So, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed my bookshelf tour slash unhaul. And um, remember to let me know which of those maybes you think I should definitely get rid of in the comments down below. Uh, please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and to subscribe if you haven't already. I put out new videos twice a week, so I'll see you again very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.